Good example. Our search team is a canine team. I am not a dog handler. I am not going to be a dog handler. I'm a man tracker. As a man tracker, I have never found a lost subject. Not one. Because that's not my job. My job is not to find them. My job is to go out and find the last known point, a starting point, and a direction to travel. I call that back in. Command looks at the Plots it on the map, looks at what's ahead, decides where to put the teams to go in and find that sudden. I'm on my hands and knees, like so, looking for tracks at this distance. I got a stick to tell me where to look, but I'm on my hands and knees crawling. That person walks off, I'm not going to catch them. But I'm not supposed to. That's not my job. My job is to sow the seed. Not necessarily to catch them, but just to sow that seed. I got to find that starting point in the direction of travel. And then somebody else will go in and make the find. I have been on a couple of finds because they put a canine down there with me and we took off and I'm behind that canine doing what I was doing on my hands and knees, that now I'm having to do it in a dead room. A little bit of difference. First time I did it, it blew my mind. After a while, I got kind of used to it and so forth. Instead of finding every step, I was finding a step which is about 18 inches or 20 inches. I was finding a step every 30, 40 feet. So it makes a difference. But I adapted it. And because of that, that I was able to be in on finding it was made. That's the same thing with your Christian army. You have to be able to adapt to the situation. To take on whatever the enemy throws against you. Because if he throws one thing against you, and if that don't work, he's going to throw something else at you the next time. So you've got to be prepared and ready to move and take on whatever it is he's got coming. You may not be the one to make the save, but you'll be the one responsible for it. Because you went out and you sowed some seed. All because you sowed no seed. Now there's a couple of you in here that might have gotten a letter back in the early, uh, late 70s, uh, 60s, early 70s, and the first word on that letter said, Greetings! Those of you who know what I'm talking about, it was not a happy birthday wish. It says, You have been drafted, show up for duty. We're going to send you down to take our physical, and if you pass a physical, honey, you, your hind part is gone. Well, back then, yeah, it was for, for, for our army, the United States Army. And whose boots were they wanting to put on the ground? They won't put on your boots on the ground. Because that's why they sent you that letter. Now, God's army is a whole lot like our army. We got the officers and we got the enlisted. The officers in God's army, they're the ones that issued orders. That's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The enlisted are the rest of us. We're the privates and the NCOs. We're the ones that actually get out there and get the work job done. We do the work. The question is, did you join this army or were you drafted? You can't be drafted in God's army. Oh, yes, you can. I'll give you a real good example. A few years ago, I remember probably 10 years ago, we had a boy came by here. His name was, I think it was Donnie Williams. Came by here and gave a talk about a prison ministry that he had been a part of, except he was the prisoner, the inmate that received it. And he told us what a difference it made in his life and how he was going out talking to different churches, trying to get them to become a part of the prison ministry to go down and help these other people. And I thought about it after he finished his talk and everything while he was talking. I said, you know, that's a good idea. This church really needs to do that. We really need to get involved and, and help these people out. I heard a little voice said, do it. That was right, that kind of blood, right? I made out like I didn't hear it at all. And I kept on saying, yeah, this church really needs to get involved. The voice the second time got a little bit louder and said, do it. Well, I couldn't ignore it that time because it was a little bit too loud. So 
I said, yeah, this church needs to get involved in. He's the one that needs to do it. He's perfect for the job. He can get out there. He can talk to people. There's another one over there. He, he's perfect. He can get out there. And he, he, he's articulate. He can get the job done. That's the ones we need to go. And then I pulled the best Moses invitation you've heard in your lifetime. I come up with every excuse why I couldn't do it that you can think of. And they work for me just as good as they work for Moses. It's not worth a clip. So finally I told him, I said, look, I just can't do it. You need to get somebody else. They ain't got the time, they ain't got the ability, they ain't got this, they ain't got that, a stomp of toe, the wind's blowing, you name it. I tried them all, none of them worked. And finally, I, I don't know how the Holy Ghost talks to y'all. But when he tells me something for the third time, he gets my attention. Y'all ever watch the A-Team on television? You remember a character on there named Mr. T? Yeah. Well, when the Holy Ghost tells me something for the third time, that's exactly what he sounded like. Because that night he said, Boy, I told you what I wanted you to do. I give you four Thursday nights a month. I want one of them back. You got a problem with that? Oh, no, 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 I got no problem. I'll give it to preaching and we'll get started on it. And I was just hoping and praying that I won't be the only one out there doing it. I'm going to have some other sucker out there with me, but as it turned out, we were just being the preacher. Only two of us to start with. And it's built up since then. But yes, you can't be drafted in God's army. As I was drafted into the prison ministry. You don't have to volunteer. The Holy Ghost will tell you when he wants you to do it. It ain't going to necessarily be what you wanted to do. I guarantee it ain't going to be on your top ten list of things you wanted to do. But it's going to be what he needs you to do. And all you've got to do is say, yes, sir, and go and do it. If not, then well, I'll let him explain the rest of it to you. And believe me, he will. <laughs> you got a mouth. You can talk. Well, I'm scared. Uh-uh, honey, you ain't. I'm going to tell you, boy, that knew what fear was of being Ananias. Did y'all remember reading about Ananias? He's the one that God talked to after uh, Saul of Tarsus fell off the donkey and, and was blinded on his uh, wall, or his uh, trip to Damascus. Well, God came to Ananias and said, Ananias, and Ananias said, yeah, Lord, what you need? And Ananias said, um, the Lord told me, Ananias, said, I want you to go to Straight Street. The man from uh, Tarsus named Saul will take the scale off his eyes. He's expecting you. Well, now, Ananias knew who Saul of Tarsus was, okay? But he had a reputation. And Ananias knew that he's just sure as he went there, he was dead. Won't know if, hands, or buts, stop, collect, go, and, uh, go to jail or nothing. He was dead. Because Saul of Tarsus is going to have him killed probably on the spot. So if he did what God told him, he would die. Guaranteed. No if, ands, or buts. And he told the Lord, he said, Lord, I know who this man is. The Lord said, go anyway. Now how much courage did it take for him to swallow his pride and go do what God told him? Knowing the consequences that he was facing. But he did. And what would we have missed if he hadn't done what God told him? I didn't want to go to the prison ministry. Holy Ghost told me I would go. I agreed, and I'm sure glad he did, because I, they got half of, out of it, what I have. They were truly blessed. And if you do half, if, wherever you're sin, if they get half of it, what you did, they indeed will be blessed. <laughs> so what do you need to do? Number one, put your boots on. And then start going out. Sow some seed. Water places that other people have been that have already sowed the seed. Throw a little fertilizer out if you need to. The water people are going to go out and they're going to reinforce the one that sowed it. The one that sowed it, they told him, it's all right, you go, I don't want to hear that junk. I want nothing to do with it. Go leave me alone. The one that comes along and waters it, 
say it was pretty much the same thing. They said, well, you know, I'm not really interested in that. Why don't you just go talk to somebody else? Difference in attitude. When it comes along with fertilizing, he's going to say, because he's going to lead this to them. He's going to tell them, well, this is what the difference God made in my life. This is some of the miracles that I have seen God do. And they're going to say, well, I don't know if I'm quite ready to hear all that or not. Then somebody will come along and they're going to do the harvest. They're going to say, tell me more about this one you call Jesus. I've heard about him, but I don't know more about him. All because somebody come along one time and said a couple of words for which they were thrown out of the building or told to go away because they had the courage to do what the Holy Ghost had told them. That's your job. Go where the Holy Ghost tells you. Kind of like a variation of a song that used to be out there. These boots are made for walking and that's just what they'll do and Satan, these boots are going to walk all over you. Isn't that right? Our boots will walk all over you. He knows the ultimate result. But if you read the last chapter in Revelation, honey, we win. Check it out. We win. The battle's already done. And in closing, and I ain't David, so I ain't going to have to say it for one time. <laughs> David, y'all don't know David, you have to say it five times. First four times is just make believe and fifth time is real. But in closing, you were born. When you were born, you cried, the world rejoice. Live your life so that when you die, you rejoice and the world cries. Thank you.